Thank you for coming along today. We're on episode number four of Project Orange Bronco, which you can see back there. There's been a lot of YouTube comments through this series about which wheels we're using because uh, we had the truck built before the video series was released. So there's a few shots in the previous videos of the actual truck that you see in the background here. Today, we're going to go over what we put on it for wheels and tires and take a look at that setup and all the parts that were used to make this thing look amazing on the wheel side. And so let's go along for the ride. It's a great big pile of SSD parts and RC four wheel drive tires. Let's take a look here. So these are 1.9 Super Swampers. Here's the part number for uh, you guys if you want to look at that. They're, they're a nice big tire. Uh, I needed a big tire because the scale of the truck is so big, but they're wide. And the rim is this just gorgeous SSD. Uh, there's the part number for you. I really like these. The, this is the gray finished ones. Uh, one of the things you'll find from SSD is that uh, they take a lot of time and beautiful orange rings. They take a lot of time to make sure that their finishing processes are really high, high quality and consistent. So really good gray finish, beautiful rotors, beautiful wheel rings. Now, the thing is you end up with some extra parts from this. Of course, the rotors you don't, but um, you, you take out the hub that's in the wheel and then you put in these new hex bolts. Uh, you take out the hub in the wheel and you take out the wheel ring. So <clears throat> the only part that you're left using, uh, and here's my wheel hubs. The only thing that you're left using from that exact box of wheels is the main wheel center and the locking ring in the back. So this was the combination of parts I thought would look the best on this. So let's get into it. Chop, chop. Uh, I don't know if you guys have a little cordless power tool that you can use for undoing screws, but I mean, this thing is so handy. So definitely these are typical, you know, uh, I think they're 2.5, uh, two millimeter head. Basically these have to get unscrewed out of the back of the wheel to take it apart. Yeah, you don't need to see all that. And then of course I've got to take apart um, the rest of that beadlock ring. I took the hub off. Now I'm using the scale hardware, 2.5 scale hardware from SSD. It's kind of an acorn nut there that you can put in the centers. Spruce those up a little bit. Definitely helps the scale look. So they were regular, you know, RC hex bolts. Now they're acorn nuts. And oh man, does it ever look better. The other thing that I did on the, uh, you'll see a black pile of screws there too in the bottom corner. Those are actually what I used on the outside ring. Also very important. Doesn't that look amazing? Look at that. Rotor. Wow. You love seeing the rotor through there. Nice acorn nuts. We're going to take all these out. I forget how many is on each one. 22 or some, some huge number. I don't know. Maybe it's more than that. I forget. Uh, a lot. So SSD sells a nice little tool to get these two mil bolts out and it's a socket with two mil on each end. So you put it on your two mil hex wrench and then off they come. Anyway, that's done. There goes the silver ring and we're going to bolt on this orange ring, but we're going to use black hardware. It came with zinc hardware, but we're going to switch it to black hardware. So tiny little bolts. This was hours. Okay. I'm talking hours of putting in hardware taking out and putting in hardware just an insane amount of time the result is equally as insanely nice look at that oh man i can't wait to show you these done hey they're done so black hex hardware and silver chrome acorn nuts and brake rotors would you look at that okay i've showed this tire i've shown you this tire foam mod a uh, hundred times on this channel but here it is again and you'll see why in a second, why this is so important. You must chamfer off the foam from your tires uh, for this style of inside beadlock ring. If you have a completely separate beadlock ring that fits in the foam before the rim goes together, you have to do this because otherwise that foam square edge pinches into the beadlock and it messes up your tire. It starts wobbling all over the place. Do both sides. One side's fine. Do the other side too. 
uh, and now it's not hard because you simply pinch it flat and then you can use a regular pair of scissors. I used to do this with an X-Acto blade and just kind of go around in an arch the whole time and it was an incredible pain and probably super dangerous. This is considerably less dangerous because we all learned how to use scissors when we were four. And so at this point I feel pretty confident using scissors near my body. Um, flatten out the foam, chop it out, boom you're done. And now take a look at the beadlock ring. You put this in here and you'll see that now there's no foam past the beadlock ring on both sides. You see that? This is critical because when you go to finally assemble this, there can't be any foam in the way. Now, some tire sorcery, which you guys may have never figured out before. Maybe you've seen this before. Um, take your tire and simply turn it inside out. This, the easiest way to get this on is, is this way. Stuffing foam in is kind of dangerous. You could rip the foam. Turn the tire inside out. That's it. Super easy. Boom, boom. You can also check if there's weird stuff in the tire. Fit the tire over one side like that and then pinch it with your hand from the back. Pinch the beadlock ring and the tire together. See that? Just pinch it from the inside and then roll the tire right over top of the rest of the wheel. That's it. Pinch it like that. Grab the tire and actually just unfold, un, how do you say, put it right side in right over top of the film of the foam look done that's it no stuffing no weird stuff going on you can go around the tire now and just make sure that it's actually sitting square super fast super easy and if you do it with the beadlock ring in the tire there's a, a really low chance you're going to tear the foam i have torn the foam a hundred times trying to put these in so that's i don't want to do that and this this method works great Plus you can basically, now that the foam is, is angle cut out of the inside beadlock area, you can basically shove it in and check to see if it lays flat right away. Too easy. Um, now we've got the finished rim that's all been re-bolted after probably two hours. That just fits right in, of course. And make sure that the beadlock ring is sitting in the square of the tire, in the square bead. And then on the back side, Get the back piece there, shove it in, line it up, and all the six bolts go back in on the inside. So you can kind of wiggle that thing into the into the back of the rubber, and then you have to push it down and make sure that it's also sitting in the square edge of the beadlock seat. If you haven't got the bolts lined up, you can just give them a bit of a twist and then put all the screws in. It's pretty simple. So that's it. But like I said, five times already. If you angle cut that piece of foam, you will not fight with the tire to put it together. It will just simply drop in. Way too nice. Now, I don't use the power tool on these. I find that putting using power tools to put trucks together seems to have a lot of failure rate. Uh, you can strip the screw heads. You can cross-thread stuff. So I always put the screws together by hand. I usually take them apart with the power tool. That seems to be the most reliable method. Um... Uh, of course, these are really deep inside, so it's kind of like the ring is already fitted into the right place before the bolts even go on. These aren't very hard to put together, so that's nice. Line that up, put that in by hand. I always put one screw in two or three threads, and then I do the one across from it, two or three threads, and then I go back to the first one and finish it down. Uh, the reason for that is because I want to make sure that the two halves of the rim are seated square. Uh, and there you go. You can check it before you go and put six bolts in the back. You can actually check it and see if it's laying flat. That looks really nice. The bead, there's no bulging in the bead. Sits nice and square. Super flat. I like that. Let's have a look. So... Uh, on the rotary table here we have the finished truck and that I think one of the reasons why this was orange called Project Orange but I saw these beadlock rings you ever built a truck because you found a nice wheel yeah well that's this truck so I found this orange beadlock ring from SSD this thing is so hot I was like that would look really hot on an orange truck and then, of course, as soon as I saw the Bronco, I thought of Lone Ranger's Bronco called Patches, which was a, uh, still is an off-road 
expedition truck it's uh, exactly this style of early bronco with full doors though um, same stripe kit i mean just an incredible truck in orange except it had a white grill and uh, i was like you know what i can do that orange theme with this tire and rim combo and i can paint this truck orange i'm totally making this thing project orange and so it basically kind of started with a beadlock ring it's funny but uh, the combo works man the combo works. Uh, the rim, uh, the beadlock ring offsets the paint color really nicely. It sort of goes with the theme. Uh, as you can see, the truck is basically done at this point in the video. There's, We do have some more to put on this truck here. We'll do it at a later time, but this is essentially done. And now that it's kind of, the colors are done, and the graphics are basically done, we're talking about like, a really good looking off-road truck you can see how the wide tire suits it so that tire is way wider than the factory tire that came on this axial Bronco and it definitely looks better with a wider tire I was hoping that was going to be the case it was definitely the case in my mind before I built it and I think we've got a pretty good result here now so there you go there's a wheel and tire combo that's just hard to beat beautiful That definitely looks better. We're very happy with the way it's turned out so far. Thank you very much for coming along for episode number four. We do have one left to go, and we will see you on the next one.